Hello and welcome to What a Day. If you're here for the first time, there is a link of a video in the description box wherein you will find an introduction to the current affairs program covering all the elements which include What a Day, What a Week, and What a Month. Now let's begin with the 18th of August. Through the magic of the universal and the invisible powers of the universe, the students of the civil services are blessed given the fact that both the papers don't have a lot to cover today on the 18th of August. What we're going to do today is we will pick out the common items in both the papers first and then we'll start with the Hindu and then move to the Indian Express. The common items in the Hindu and the Indian Express are on page number 14. So first things first, if you're reading the Hindu, take the Hindu out. If you're reading the Indian Express, you can take the newspaper out. Page number 14 in the business economy section in the Hindu and page number 13 in the Indian Express economy business section are going to be covered together because what is important is the same across both of those pages. Now, there are essentially two pieces of information. If you're reading the Hindu, the headline will say credit guarantee plan expanded to aid hospitality and related sectors. The same news in the Indian Express is going to say I on hospitality, the cabinet clears loans worth 50 crores for the emergency credit line guarantee scheme. ECLGS is the short form for it. The second piece of item which is important is in the Hindu, the heading will say, Centre restores farm loan interest subsidy as rates rise. And on page number 13 in the Indian Express, approximately 35,000 crore loan for farm loan interest subvention. Right? Now, what do both of these things have in common? Simply, cheaper loans, but for two different sets of people. The emergency credit guarantee scheme is extended to those sectors which were severely affected in the pandemic, almost to the brink of shutting down or collapsing. So for them to come back and build them back on their feet, the government is trying to help them with cheaper loans. Now, does that mean the government is going to give them loans? No. The government has tied up with banks in the country who are going to offer cheaper loans and a dedicated set of loans to the travel sector, the hospitality sector. Now, what do you do with this piece of information? One, will you get a question on this in the prelims exam per se? The answer is no. What is an emergency credit line scheme? It is essentially a tool to help or to boost a certain sector which is struggling for funds. So if you are writing a larger answer on the travel and the hospitality sector, this is one of the measures taken by the government. Two, if you are writing a larger answer on the measures taken by the government to improve all sectors as a whole, one of the examples is this. So how do you take a note of it? You simply keep a page which says government initiatives which are financial in nature and one of them is this. Now, I don't think a classroom program or any course per se teaches you the travel or the tourism sector as a whole. It is a sector, can sometimes be asked, doesn't technically very specifically fit in the syllabus but in the larger ambit of governance there is a possibility of a question to be asked so you are not writing the mains this year so therefore you don't have to worry about it right now if this recurs over a period of time then we come back to it and we do a full scale analysis of the travel and the hospitality sector as a whole in what a week right now don't bother about it it's just one of the smaller measures that have been taken 
do you make a separate dedicated sort of a paragraph note on it no you don't you really don't have to if you have a list of sectors written down somewhere and you have travel and hospitality is one of the sectors you will have transport communication infrastructure energy power education health etc etc just in the uh, travel and hospitality sector you can just put a bullet and say the government is giving you cheaper loans by tying up with the banks that's it the second part <clears throat> as we are aware due to several circumstances whether it is the pandemic or the resurgence of it or for that matter the russia ukraine war or the conflict the economy all across the world has not been in a good shape which has also led to higher inflation which has also led to banks increasing their rates these are called bank rates for that matter so what happens is the bank makes it more expensive the rbi the reserve bank of india makes it more expensive for banks to borrow money from the rbi therefore at the end a retail loan customer finds it more expensive to take a loan it's a very simple process if for example the rbi says my original rate of interest hypothetically this is not a real figure is 1% and let us say sbi takes a chunk of money from rbi at 1% gives it to you at 2% but if rbi makes it 2% then <clears throat> sbi will further enhance it to you and me at 3% right now where is the problem the agricultural sector or particularly the farmers will always be given a cheaper rate of loan but if the banks have already increased their rates now you must understand there is something called priority sector lending there are a few sectors like agriculture wherein loans given to these sectors will always be cheaper than other sectors but it can still be expensive if this rate increases so what does the government do the government again ties up with the banks and tries to cheapen the interest on the loans so this is what is called a intervention or a loans a loan sub intervention scheme that's it how is it relevant for your exam do you need to know this from a prelims perspective no do you need to know what priority sector lending is yes now when will you be taught priority sector lending in your economy or whenever you are studying economy when you are studying sectors or uh, or the rbi for that matter you will read about priority sector lending if you are not taught it if you still need to go about it just google rbi priority sector lending you will be directed to a web page on the rbi's website which will show you a very clear explanation of what priority sector lending is what are the sectors covered and how, what is the benefit that is given to them remember do not do any technicality on priority sector lending for example commercial banks scheduled commercial banks non scheduled commercial banks what are the different terms and conditions they are not in your syllabus don't bother what is also important is the sectors which are a part of priority sector lending over the last year or so we've seen a few more sectors added so keep that into account so when do you study about this you study about this when you are studying economics you study this right now you will anyways have to redo this so remember the separate page that we are maintaining topics to be integrated in the course syllabus just write priority sector lending dash agriculture dash economy dash banking and whenever the time is right cover it up so as in when the time is right keep ticking it off from that main sheet also that this topic had to be covered and now has been covered in the core static syllabus so this <coughs> takes care of the common portions of the hindu and the indian express now we will begin with the hindu 
So you can take out your Hindu newspaper. We'll start with it. There isn't a lot to be covered in the first place. So let's quickly go through the pages. The front page of the Hindu newspaper today on the 18th of August is absolutely irrelevant as far as the exam is concerned. Now, the biggest headline that you will see on the front page is that the Ministry of Home Affairs, the MHA, overrules a minister's tweet on providing flats to Rohingyas, right? Now, if you have been studying for the UPSC for a while, you would know what the Rohingya crisis is. If you don't, all you've got to do is just open Google, type Rohingya crisis explained, you will see on the front page itself a BBC link which explains to you what is the Rohingya crisis, why did it happen, who are the stakeholders, what have the developments been so far. This is more than enough. It is a recurring issue and will continue for a long time. Now, why does this affect India? Because Rohingyas are minorities in Myanmar. Myanmar is a neighboring country to India and there were a lot of people who wanted to officially migrate to India should be given a refugee status. India had resisted that. It was also in the context of the CAA, which also added a little more complexity to the problem. But any further development from that is not in your syllabus, is not something you have to worry about. Whether there are a few who are settled in Delhi or elsewhere, will there be detention centers, the UNHCR card and all of that, don't worry about it. You should know what the Rohingya crisis is. That's it. Otherwise, the article on the front page itself is not important. Then you will see Nadda drops Gadkari brings in Yadurappa in a BJP rejig. Now, this is something to do with the parliamentary board of the Bharatiya Janata Party. Now, this is not a constitutional body or a statutory body. It is an internal body of a political party which oversees the work of the party in the parliament. How there is an elections committee also of the party who decides or takes key decisions with respect to an election, prioritizes candidate selection, who should be given a ticket to, and so on and so forth. Is this important for you, for the civil services? No. But the idea that big political parties have a parliamentary board, have an elections committee, is to showcase or demonstrate intra-party democracy. That parties are also democratic in nature because they are in the business of democracy. So that is just something you should know. You don't need to write it down anywhere because this is so common that you will end up knowing it whatsoever. Then you will see another editor, another article that says the High Court rules in favor of OPS in the AIDMK power struggle. Completely political in nature. This is essentially about a shift of power. Don't worry about it. On the left corner, you will see the Chief Minister of Delhi launches a Make India Number One campaign, which is essentially to be understood in the context of the upcoming 24, 24 Lok Sabha elections. So, don't worry too much about it, it's not really important. Then you come to page number two. These are very specific Delhi centric news. Don't have to worry about it, you don't have to do it. For those of you who have the Delhi edition, you will see an article which says the delimitation exercise has not been done as per the rules. Now, a lot of you would not know what a delimitation commission is. It is a very standard subtopic as a part of your polity syllabus. Delimitation is nothing but reorganizing the boundaries of, of electoral divisions. Whether it is a Lok Sabha commission, whether it's a Lok Sabha constituency, whether it's an assembly constituency, whether it is a local constituency. So what is this in the context of that about last year, the three civic bodies were unified in a certain process. Now in Delhi, the center could do this because the center has certain overarching powers over Delhi. This was a political sort of a rift also, but the powers of the delimitation commission the questions on delimitation commission are very static, even if they are asked in the exam. So, 
you will be studying the delimitation commission it is in your standard textbooks even if you're taking a course somewhere you will be taught this so don't worry about it at all so apart from that nothing on page number two is of even remote relevance as far as the exam is concerned same goes for page number three now on page number three you will see an, an article which says the cbi freezes mandals fixed deposits of over 16 crores this does not mean mean that you get into a, a a sort of an analysis of what the cbi is what are its powers again this is to be done in a very very standard theoretical manner in the mains exam there has only been one question which has been asked and that was contextual to developments which is essentially uh, CBI's positioning as a conflict between the center and the states with respect to the powers of arrest and the states of course can uh, stop the CBI from doing so otherwise they had what is called a, a priority in arrest but anyways that is done and dusted with you don't have to worry about it at the moment similarly political news such as uh, arguments or, or or speculations with respect to uh, divisions in a political party in Bengal etc also are not very important don't have to be done uh, you will also see an article which will slightly confuse you on page number three will go to the precedent if the Supreme Court court if sorry the scheduled caste quota is not implemented now you will see something called the Attorney General's office mentioned there now you must understand this for example the uh, the uh, there is something called the attorney general <clears throat> and there is something called the advocate general the attorney general is the lawyer of the central government who represents the central government in cases where the central government is a party the advocate general is the lawyer representing the state government this particular article is about the advocate general now the advocate general will be one person but because you are representing the center the, the state government in cases involving the state government there will be far too many cases so you will have people who will be appointed to assist you and help you learn run legal affairs by the government now these could be considered as government jobs so a few of them would also be reserved for people from the underprivileged background or communities so the idea here is the problem with Punjab was that a specific number of posts should have been reserved for the scheduled castes but has not been is it anywhere relevant for you for the exam absolutely not but in case you feel a little lost reading this particular article this is what the article means apart from that you do not see anything else which is important from page number three um, there are some unfortunate news items such as a woman dies a week after being set on fire by relatives what you can always do is remember how yesterday we had kept kept the list of uh, anecdotes or or instances where yesterday we spoke of a cancer survivor completing an iron man uh, sort of a racing event you could also write this as an anecdotal introduction on an essay on women empowerment or the state of women in our country apart from that i don't think anything else needs to be really worried about um, as far as uh, page number three is concerned then on page number four you could also summarily don't wor not worry about it you don't have to read it at all uh, you know most of the news here is political or development based so you can completely skip through page number four whether it is about a high court judgment on a political verdict whether it is about beginning of a monsoon session in Maharashtra or whether it's about Stalin call, calling on the, the president the vice president and the newly elected vice president and of course the president you can completely forget about it now on page number five um, you will see a news item which says civic action helps Assam rifles thwart s uh, smuggling now is this theoretically important no but this is a very good example of how paramilitary forces when they work in cohesion from inputs given by local communities can not only build trust 
also inspire local communities to join the forces but also largely solve the law and order problems. Now, Assam Rifles is the country's oldest paramilitary force and officers to the Assam Rifles are often on deputation from the armed forces, right? So, of course, the composition and the nature of the Assam Rifles is slightly different. You can Google about them or you can uh, read about them anywhere. This is not something very complex. But how do you use this particular news item? The way that you use it is when you're writing an answer on, say, law and order problems in the Northeast or Naxalism in the Northeast or, or, or local resentment in the Northeast or the role of the paramilitary forces in the Northeast. This can be a beautiful introductory context that recently when the leaders of uh, local communities reached out to the Assam Rifles and helped them solve a law and order problem which was essentially about smuggling of weapons and other prohibited uh, substances. Now, apart from that, the possibility of a flood um, in and around Godavari, all of those things are, of course, worrying but not particularly important as far as the exam is concerned. Now, apart from that, you will see another news item that says, Kerala seeks review of the apex order on ecologically sensitive zones. Now, this might seem a little odd to you. So basically what had happened was the court had given a judgment saying that one kilometers in and around ecologically sensitive zones such as forests etc will also be completely cut off from human inhabitation. Now this is also an ethical issue. Now how is this an ethical issue? It is an ethical issue because on one hand you want to preserve the environment but if you are shaving off human population one kilometer in and around that zone, you're also going to affect the livelihoods and the living of specific communities who live around the areas and their livelihoods and their habitats are dependent on that area. Well, that is an ethical context. Now, is this particular piece of information important right now? No. There is also a little bit of a polity angle. The Supreme Court has already given a judgment now the Kerala government has filed for what is called a review petition. Now don't get alarmed, review petitions, curative petitions, they will all be either taught to you or you will go through them in your standard textbooks when you go through the powers or the jurisdictions of the Supreme Court and you will understand the differences between the two. But always remember, whether it's a review petition or a curative petition, you just need to know uh, two to three line meaning of it and a couple of examples here or there. Do not do this in detail. You will not get a means question analyzing review or curative petitions as a whole. You may be using it to understand the larger role played by the Supreme Court, but nothing very specific. So that is that. So this is just a little bit of context. Don't remember it, don't take it down. In your environment classes also, they will tell you about the, uh, the ESZ uh, ruling. In case you want to, you can Google it like how I've shown you. You'll understand what the, the ecologically sensitive zone ruling is. Just write EZ, ESZ explained and you will get an article which will explain it to you. Doesn't matter from where, it will more or less be the same. Now, apart from this, you don't have to worry about anything else. Then you can move to page number uh, 5 page number 5 we are done you can now move to page number 6 and on page number 6 we have the editorials now thankfully we have uh, three editorials and all and the three editorials that are important are so the first is of course uh, the editorial which says the geopolitics of the fourth Taiwan crisis now <clears throat> honestly because this is a development that you might be interested in, I would recommend that you read it once and you probably watch a YouTube video that says China Taiwan explain. That's it. Nothing else really. But I don't think you need to make any notes out of it. I don't think you have to do the context of it. This in any form or manner will not be asked in the civil services exam so don't waste your time on it if you have no interest in it 
don't read it but there are some students who are genuinely interested in developments in the world so for your intellectual curiosity i can recommend this article to you but as far as exam relevance is concerned i specifically prohibit you from reading this particular article it is not important the other three editorials are important in a very different context so there is an editorial that says this maritime partnership is still a work in progress now it is of course written by um, a thinker and a, and a research analyst uh, at the observer research foundation which is one of india's fairly well known think tanks now what is the explanation here so what has happened here is that a us naval ship has a uh, which is a non militarized ship it's a cargo vessel it does not have any arms as such it's sort of fighting ship that's as simple as it can be has been docked at a port i think near chennai in india i'm not too sure of where it has been at a at a dock in chennai for repairs so when india is repairing ships of the us it enhances military cooperation between india and the us now india doesn't want to be too open about it because of the china factor and it may be a case that china may retaliate in a certain manner and of course we've had the 2 by 2 ministerial conference which basically means two representatives from here and two representatives from there usually of a ministering of of a ministerial stature that's it that's what the 2 plus 2 ministerial conference means so what does this article do this article explains to you how we've come a long way for enhancing indo us defense ties but we still have a long way more to go this entire editorial will be shrunk into a maximum of a paragraph on indo us defense relations which is important for the means none of the organizations which have been mentioned here such as the 2 the 2 plus 2 or the event such as the 2 plus 2 ministerial conference or the bahrain relationship will be asked in the exam in the pre at all in the means you can use them contextually so what do we do in the topics to be covered in the core syllabus just write indo us defense partnership mark 18th of august editorial as a reference point so whenever you are studying indo us relations in which there are diplomatic relations economic relations uh, military relations defense relations you can read this editorial at that time to just read this without the larger context of india and us is not important you don't have to worry about it too much so don't sit down and and start revising india us if you're just starting out your prep if you are somebody who's already preparing you would have some material on indo us just add this under the heading indo us defense relations now on the left you will see an article which says finding a home now why is there an editorial on this all of a sudden is because there is a report of the parliamentary committee which says that while the laws on adoption of children in india have become slightly more strict we've also tried to facilitate all of this but the number of people who are actually ready and have actually adopted children in india is significantly low now they've mentioned some organizations such as cara which is one of your primary agencies responsible for uh, ch child adoption and and welfare but anyways now as an aspirant who's reading this for the first time you will see a lot of things that you have no idea about how do we prepare this this particular article that we are referring to is about children children are covered in two parts in your general studies syllabus one in paper 1 on which is called which is on social issues and second in paper 2 on social justice where there is a specific topic called vulnerable sections so when you are preparing a consolidated note on children you will find a specific issue called adoption of children in that you should know who the primary agency is what are the primary laws that are governing it and how do we where are the problems and how do we solve it now when this will be taught to you you can prepare it don't sit and prepare children right away because you have a lot more to cover 
if you are somebody who's been preparing for a while and you are comfortable enough then what you can do is simply google laws governing child adoption in india you will find most likely an article by i block pleaders which is a very good legal website and you'll find all the major laws and the problems in it and that will be more than enough and you can then do a cara analysis and you'll get an analysis of cara as well in case you want to do this on your own otherwise i'm sure your standard material will anyways give you enough information on this as to how does this work so this becomes important i will also cover this in what a month and give you some context to this so if you are not you can wait for a few days i'll give you a a one one and a half pager on this in the magazine itself then the third editorial is about sudden death now don't get worried reading the the title of it it is essentially about fifa banning india now this editorial explains to you why it has happened it has happened because when the court appointed a, a committee to oversee the affairs of the all india football federation that committee gave more representation to football players in football policy making which fifa did not agree with now is this really important for your exam no but the larger problem of sporting regulators is now we know that this has happened and for the next few days we're going to see a few recurring articles in fact on page number 15 we also see an article which says which says that the supreme court has asked the center to so resolve the matter by talking to fifa about it so as and when that happens we'll keep covering it but don't sit and 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 uh, worry about it too much then comes page number 7 uh, now on page number 7 the editorials that are mentioned now this can seem a little bit of a problem but i'll quickly tell you why the editorials on page number 7 are not important on page number 7 you will see uh, an editorial which causes a lot of temptation to civil service aspirants the editorial says the center versus state tussle as far as the postings of ias officers are concerned now the reason this editorial has been written is because there was recently a report which said that there is a massive deficit of officers of the indian police service which is also an all india service which means recruited by the center removed by the center but they work at the states and they can't come to the center unless the states relieve them or they want to now uh, what happens here is that we have several law and order and enforcement agencies such as the national investigation agency the cbi the enforcement directorate and at leadership positions at these investigation agencies we are required to have several officers of a senior nature from the indian police service but it has so turned out that these officers are not wanting to come to center now this might sound exciting to you and and discussion worthy but if you and these are instances what you have to learn this is where you have to really hold and control yourself do you see this is relevant anywhere in the prelims no if you seen the past year questions on civil services what is it that you should know the questions on civil services reforms are either asked in paper 2 or or, or in paper 4 and they are asked from a from a more umbrella point of view in terms of how can they be more objective how can they be more transparent how can they be more uh, uh, accountable how can they be better at their jobs you will not see a specific uh, 10 marker or a 12 and a half marker on this now secondly you could use this as a context of what is called confrontational federalism when you're writing a larger answer on federalism but do you need to know in the details of it no you don't need to know all india civil services rules you don't need to know what the judgments are you don't need to know what the exact battle is so don't read the editorial the fact that there is a problem of civil all india officers not willing or not being relieved or not coming to the center enough is is enough for you to know it affects the central governance ecosystem it affects leadership in primary organs it affects federalism and of course it affects policy making as a whole and that's it nothing else 
so please do not sit and read and discuss about this or i often see this that that in the glorious lanes of coaching hubs in delhi uh, over a cup of tea you will see a lot of students discussing do you know this is the problem don't bother it's not really that important now apart from this <clears throat> on on page number uh, on page number 6 you will uh, sorry on page number 7 you will also see another article which says um, data opportunity at the g20 now the title of the article will seem very enticing but when you actually read the article what you will understand is very very disappointing is that the article here basically says that india must propose a comprehensive global data policy that nations should adhere to so that we have effective mechanisms to manage the data market the data mining companies and also at the same time safeguard the interests of privacy of the people who are essentially what are called data sets it is something that we should do at the t at the g20 summit if and when that happens that's it is it important do i need to read it no india should push for this at every international forum that india gets to be a part of now apart from this the rocky road to mangode which is essentially about a by election in the state of telangana again not important now we come to page number 8 page number 8 refers to arctic warming now why is this important and this is extremely important by the way so uh, because there have been reports that the ice sheet in greenland has been melting at an alarming rate this is the context of the article now why is this important and how should you be going about this it is already in a note form so do you make shorter notes out of it well you could underline the important parts and and put like a post it on it or put like a or put like an additional uh, sheet on it and and do that that's okay if you want to make shorter notes out of it so you can remember it better yes so should you have a dedicated pager on arctic warming yes where does this fit in in the larger topic called climate change and global warming in environment the effects of this are also going to affect a lot of other areas of your syllabus but this is largely where you should have this so you should save this article you want to make shorter notes out of it you can do that you want to keep this article as a print out or as a copy of it in your environment textbooks or even in your notes next to global warming please do that it is an important article you should read it and i'll come back to it at during what a week rewind and i will revise this article with you give you a little more information on it but this has to be done and that is it for the hindu newspaper today when you see page number 9 which is about a lovely article on one of my favorite cities in the country uh, where i've spent a lot of my own time is of course lucknow uh, not really important on page number 10 you will also see um, a lot of national news which is of course carry forward with the bilkis banu issue where the the gujarat government has released the people who had uh, gang raped her and of course this issue is largely more important from a remissions point of view the fact that the central government the state governments the president and the governor have powers to release people before the jail time this is also in the context of how we've decided to release prisoners who have finished half their their jail tenure so that they can come back and become productive members the ethical conflict is there are certain crimes that are unforgivable uh, will a person really become better by coming back into society now that's that uh, apart from that i do not see anything else uh, that are particularly important you don't have to worry about it um, as far as page number uh, 10 is concerned um, you will see anti ca stir resumes in northeast in a small a uh, block on page number 10 don't get to hassle about it uh, citizenship amendment act the issues should be covered for you in your polity classes uh, whether you're studying them on your own or somebody is teaching you at the bottom of it you will see an article which says supreme court reserves the verdict on same day sentencing now remember this should be done once the judgment has been delivered now what is same day sentencing let's understand this so a criminal trial is a so a criminal trial is essentially a case involving a person committing a crime 
Now, what usually happens here is the, the, the basic, a very simple journey of a crime is a crime is committed, then a crime is reported, the crime is then investigated, and then the crime is adjudicated. This adjudication stage happens in a criminal court. In some cases, it's also called a sessions court. Now, uh, Evidences are, are looked into, witnesses are heard, uh, statements are made, cross-examinations happen and then it is decided whether the person has committed the crime or not. If the person has committed a crime, then it is called a conviction. If the court decides the per person has not committed a crime, it's called an acquittal. It's that simple. Now, suppose the conviction came today on the 18th of August 2022. The court has decided that person X has, for example, committed theft. Now, person X also has to be given a punishment for it. The question is, should the punishment also be given at the same time? Or should the court take a few days, let both sides also understand if there are any special cases, are there any special circumstances, do all criminals have to be given the same punishment for the same crime? The depth and the brevity of it might differ from point A to point B. So, but then that delays the process and if you take a, a lot more days where convictions have happened but sentencing is pending, which further adds to under trial or further adds to judicial delays, but if you do it too soon, you are not given an opportunity to truly reflect on the impact of it. So too late is a problem, too soon is a problem, which is what the larger issue is about. Now, do we need to go about this right now? No, we don't need to. Let's wait, let the Supreme Court judgment come out. Then we'll worry about what needs to be done and what doesn't need to be done. All right, now uh, don't worry about statements that say Russian crude has Ukrainian blood in it. Uh, it is of course very important, but don't worry about it from UPSC point of view. Now, on page number 11, again, it's the whole Rohingya issue. It's about detention centers and all of those. Now, you will see a, a statement made by the Supreme Court on page number 11 that says, voters are not looking for freebies, right? Voters are not looking for freebies. Now, here is the issue. See, uh, this is essentially the Supreme Court entertaining a public interest litigation which means it is a it is a case which has been filed to the supreme court by a person on behalf of a larger community for a justifiable cause so you may not necessarily have to be related to the case because you think it affects a larger chunk of people so you've come to the court to deliver a judgment now pils and the history of it and how have PILs aided in judicial activism or not are standard theoretical topics that, of course, your classes in judiciary, your textbooks in judiciary will cover. If you need more, I have already released my, my, my uh, classes uh, on polity for free for everybody. So you can go to the website and you can, uh, and you'll find a lecture on PIL and, and it'll help you understand what it is if you need to get some context to what PILs are. Anyways, so the case is in progress where in the while the case is being heard the judges hearing the case have said well it may not just be about freebies people might be looking for something more and so on and so forth so don't get too hassled don't get too don't get too bogged about it don't sit and get into uh, uh, an analysis of is the freebie model working what freebie versus targeted benefits versus socialism versus capitalism don't move into that tangent at all leave the news as it is it's what is called a work in progress supreme court news right so so that is that apart from that there's nothing really that that catches the eye on page number 11 also uh, page number 12 as we know is again an extension which says delhi of course is the most polluted city in the world with pm levels of 2.5 yes just google pm 2.5 and know what is pm what are the ingredients that that contribute that are used uh, to calculate air quality indexes in India, what are the organizations that sort of regulate it? This is standard, this should also be in your environment or you could just do a Google search on it. You should know of these things. These are essentially called environment regulators and data analysts. Anyways, so what is also important here is that uh, every few months you will see a random or for the, for the lack of a better word, uh, an agency of some kind 
telling you that India is very polluted and we know India is very polluted and we know Delhi is extremely polluted. I for one am a victim of it now and a perpetrator as well. Now here's the thing and, and this is where you must understand the, the, the essence of it. The essence of it is that just because an agency has said something like this does not mean that you get back into the whole, whole air pollution, uh, air governance and all of that. Air pollution as a topic, measures to combat air pollution, measures to combat pollution in general, they are all very, very standard topics in your environment syllabus. So wait for your books to cover it, wait for your lectures to cover it and of course you can add that Delhi is of course the most polluted city in the world. Now I understand a lot of students would also be attracted to the idea that an actress called Jacqueline Fernandez has been named by the Enforcement Directorate in the 2000 crore, sorry, 200 crore extortion case. Irrelevant. I don't have to justify it by explaining to you why it is irrelevant. Now, apart from that, all the news on the left column of of the page also is not important. On foreign affairs, on page number thirteen, uh, there are some pieces of unfortunate news is uh, unfortunate news. But again, don't worry too much about it. You will see a news item that says Israel and Turkey have restored full relations. They had withdrawn relations because of an attack that had killed about 60 Palestinians um, in, the Gaza, in, in Gaza at a, at a point of time, which is where Turkey had taken an, uh, and, and Israel had taken stands to withdraw relationships with each other. Now that's that. Apart from that, India-China troops will take part at the Russian war games in Vostok. Now this sounds like there is, there is, there is something very exciting going on. It's essentially a defense exercise, so don't worry about it too much. You will see another article that says a Saudi woman has been jailed for 34 years. This also becomes an anecdote that you can use to write answers on women empowerment. She was essentially a PhD candidate who would actively speak out against um, laws or institutions suppressing women rights. So the Saudi Arabian administration has punished her for about, for about uh, 34 years. Now, we've covered the business section already and there's really nothing else in the sports section apart from a carryover news of the, the FIFA matter. So that covers the Hindu for you. Now, for those of you who only read the Hindu, great, our time's up. For those of you who read the Indian Express, let's quickly go through this. Now, interestingly, the first few pages of the Indian Express are not important. Even the front page, which actually is page number three of the Indian Express, uh, I do not find anything particularly important except for probably a last uh, headline that says, with um, funds and engineers, Taliban helps to build Gurudwara, which was hit by the Islamic State. Now, this is a confidence building measure because India and Taliban are now looking at at least communicating on some points uh, because they are currently the, pro the proclaimed government in Afghanistan. Uh, the Bilkis issue, of course, is a carryover from yesterday, which is, of course, again, the same thing that um, her, her perpetrators have been released before their time by the Gujarat government. This is, of course, in the larger uh, scheme of things that, that covered half the sentences and therefore could be uh, released uh, before that time. And, and this will continue for a, for a while. Um, as far as the Rohingya issues are concerned, again, for those of you who don't know what Rohingya is, just, just Google Rohingya crisis explained. You will find what is called a BBC article, which I was showing here. Uh, that explains what the Rohingya crisis is and that will take care of most of your issues. Now, do we need to do this in detail at all at any given point of time? No. Uh, its impact on CA, etc. and government stand? No. Not important at all. So the first page can completely therefore be left out and let's not worry about it at all. When we move to the, the, the third page is actually the, 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 the front page, then we move to the fourth page, which is an extension of the reports on the first page. The fifth page again is very specifically um, about uh, news in the city. There is something that you will find which says a gaming app leads the police to uh, a 16 year old missing girl, which is a, a one off interesting way to say that technology in its own curiously remarkable ways can also have a good impact. Uh, apart from that, there is really not anything else that is important from uh, page number five. Uh, page number six is again city news, Delhi news. We have a new parking system at the, at the Delhi airport. And of course, uh, Delhi is uh, 
the most polluted city in the country again not particularly that important this is also in the hindu but again the news itself is not important because this will happen every every few months there will be a report by an agency that will say so and in environment you will study about pollution and air pollution as a whole so you don't really have to worry about it at all at any given point of time right so so don't worry about it uh, okay uh, apart from this, on page number 7, you will see something called government politics. Uh, again, nothing particularly important. There is nothing that really catches the eye. You will not see, uh, for example, you will not see, for example, the, the Supreme Court. This is also in the Hindu, but again, this is an ongoing case on the Supreme Court hearing a ban on public interest litigations. Uh, 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 sorry, uh, 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 hearing a PIL on on say uh, freebies or promising freebies as party politics and the supreme court seems to be not very inclined to grant relief on that pil largely because it is very subjective the case is still going on so let's not break our heads over it uh, this is also again i said featured cross in the in the in the hindu as well but because the news in itself is not important i didn't take that up to be common between both the papers now, apart from this, there are some criminal political events and of course, uh, the agricultural ministry's advanced estimates, this is also in the Hindu, but the news itself is not important that of course, uh, a few of our crops have increased in production, a few have not. These are very periodic exercises. You have a very, very long way to go before the pre and the mains. Don't sit with these minor pieces of data at the moment. They are only going to add to your memory. Now, apart from that, on page number 8, uh, I do not find anything else which is uh, important uh, from, from a news point of view, uh, from, from the UPSC point of view. Uh, from page number 9, now this is the explainer column. This is where the first piece of information sort of becomes important. Uh, this is just to give you context. Uh, this is to explain what is the difference between a developed country, a developing country and of course, uh, so developed countries, economies in transition and developing economies. Previously, we used to call them developed, developing and underdeveloped, which is obviously objectionable because uh, it doesn't seem right, it doesn't, it doesn't sound well, it doesn't, it, it doesn't bode well, it is, it is, it is insensitive. So the idea is, does India agree to this sort of a vague UN classification? And if it does, what are the objections that it does with? And what can India do to get there? Now, this is an article that you should just read once. And at the outset, just keep this article as important for an essay when we talk about largely the role of India becoming a superpower or India becoming a, a, a force to reckon with globally and so on and so forth. There is also an explainer on why a, a heart attack happens. This was recently when a comedian in India suffered from a heart attack, so don't worry about it. Now we come to the editorial page. Now on the editorial page, you will see something called My Witch Trial in Kolkata. This is respect to a professor who taught at an extremely prestigious uh, college in Calcutta, university in Calcutta called St. Xavier's, where she was wearing clothes of her choice. And, uh, and she had posted a few photos of herself on her social media and of course she faced a lot of backlash for it. Now from an ethical standpoint it is about the right of choice versus uh, social brevity but from, from other, otherwise from a larger non-ethical standpoint this editorial is not really that relevant. Apart from that the death of a Dalit student of course is about how we still have very, very regressive circumstances of backward classes in India. Don't need to really read it because it's of a specific context, so don't worry about it. It does, of course, give you some data points such as the ones from the National Crime Records Bureau, which you will anyways find when you do atrocities against backward classes. Uh, then you will see something called um, on his plate, which is essentially about the incoming new Chief Justice of India, Yu Hu Lalit. This generally tells you that he has a lot of issues in the judiciary to deal with. Then you will see another uh, article which says, don't look at PSUs, which basically says that PSUs should not be considered as opportunities to create job and advance economies. You should look at job creation elsewhere, which is also what the editorial here talks about. 
important from a larger context of the relevance of PS PSU's joblessness or unemployment in the country. So you can read it once. You don't have to particularly revise it again because this will come back in your theory classes anyway. Uh, the Oscars issue again is not important. It's a very old one. Continuing from yester from from so so there is an article by. Uh, three very very well known policy analysts and economists on of course problems in the power sector now this of course is uh, was also there in some form yesterday also you can read it once i found it to be unnecessarily too technical it also has some cross references to a terry report it also has references to a lot of tariff losses uh, transmission distribution losses read it once and correlate it to the orf article i've already enclosed in the in the uh, issue shortlist you will find the longer shortlist which covers relevance and subsidiary references on the telegram channel so make sure that you have a look at it the editorial on president and strongman also is not important it does not concern india and india uk also is not particularly that important it's just about how we have a shared culture and sort of heritage um, apart from that israel and turkey to store for uh, to restore full diplomatic ties on page 12 now that we are here again also common to hindu but as such the article in itself is not important so again we don't need to really do this not really important apart from that uh, Anything else on page number 12 as far as world affairs is concerned, I do not find particularly relevant. Then we've already covered page number 13, which is business. We started our class with that. And page number 14, 15, and 16 are sports and beyond. You don't have to do them at all. So as we saw today, what was what were our key learnings? There were a lot of articles which were common between the both between both papers which were important. There were a lot of articles which were common in both papers and were not important such as the Israel-Turkey uh, resuming their diplomatic ties, such as estimates on agricultural uh, produce, such as Delhi being, uh, being re-crowned as the most polluted city in the country. Now, just because they're common doesn't make it relevant. That's also something we have to learn. So that's it for today. I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. Bye-bye.